it's an ultimate challenge of thinking is to think outside the paradigm that one exists in. And, uh, you know, I'm trying, but it's really hard. So can you imagine like a taxonomy of observers? You know, we can get observers like us, we could get different kinds of observers that don't have much in common with us. And there's this entire taxonomy of the kinds of observers yes. you might expect to arise. Wow, yes. that would be fascinating. Well, you know, one of the challenges, though, which is a very humbling thing, is it's very hard to imagine what it's like to be an observer not like us. Yeah. You know, I've been kind of trying to get some, some indication of that. You know, these, these efforts of looking at generative AI and looking at kind of the, the images that minds similar but not quite like ours can generate and so on. That's one approach. Another thing I've been curious about is, uh, you know, as we look across Rulial space, we can see many different kinds of minds, many different intelligences. We see human ones where, you know, we kind of each more or less understand what other human intelligences are, are thinking, so to speak. When it comes to the cats and dogs, there's less alignment of our kind of thinking processes, but we still get, you know, some things are still recognizable. Some emotional states may be recognizable, things like this. Um, and the question is, one thing I've been interested in recently is, uh, with humans, we have a, a fairly rich way of expressing ourselves through human language, through the kind of compositional structure of human language, where you can mix and match different concepts and sentences and, and so on. Well, the question is, as we, uh, as, as we, if, if we were able to expand our minds, what kind of next level of expression could we get beyond human language? So, you know, the cats and dogs, maybe they have a, a, you know, a fetch, sit, you know, single word at a time type view of things. Could the cats and dogs understand? Could they internalize the notion of compositional language for humans? I don't know. Could we internalize whatever the next level up is beyond compositional language? I mean, if we even take the very practical question, let's say we had a trillion neurons instead of a hundred billion or a hundred trillion neurons or something, what kinds of things might then be things that we could think in terms of? You know, right now we, we have this, we, we've gotten to this level of kind of abstraction and uh, way of expressing ourselves. We had talked earlier about kind of the, the structure of human knowledge and so on. And I think this also relates to that. What kind of thing might there be that is beyond compositional language? And I, I kind of have the suspicion that the efforts we've made in computational language and the kinds of structures we can build there might give us some hints about that. That as you think computationally, that that's a, a way to start to, to pull oneself up a little bit beyond what we have in our current kind of way of conceptualizing things. But, you know, there's a lot of kind of how would we, what would we be like if we were thinking differently? You know, another very simple kind of thing to imagine is we get to have this one-dimensional stream of, of expression in human language. For the cats and dogs, they don't get to have, you know, that, that stream of language because they don't talk. Yeah. You know, they could in principle type, you know, with very slowly with their paws and so on. Well, for us, for example, when it comes to images, we can very slowly create an image by, you know, drawing it with a pencil or whatever else. AIs can generate images quickly. So one thing that's sort of an interesting thought experiment, what if we could take the mental images that we form in our minds and externalize them? You know, everybody has a little display showing what they're thinking, so to speak. You know, what does that, that's a little ways into sort of a different level of communication than we have right now. But I have to say, I have found it awfully difficult to think about what it would be like to think in a way that's very different from the way we think. I think it's, it's a, you know, I've kind of um, been pushing friends of mine who write science fiction and so on to explore this. And I have to say that, that there been, some explorations have been done uh, along those lines, although it tends to be the case that, that what they describe is kind of the human surface of what might be something different underneath. It's kind of, you know, 
the aliens are still talking to us. The aliens are still you know, doing whatever, even though underneath there might be a, a different conceptual framework. But it's, it's, a very, it's a very challenging thing. I mean, this is the story, this is the ultimate story of breaking out of one's paradigm, so to speak, is, uh, you know, can we think in a very different way from the way we normally think? Uh, you know, the way I see kind of the growth of paradigms in, in science and so on, it's like every new paradigm is getting a little bit further in rural space. Just like we send out spacecraft, we get further in physical space. In rural space, the way we, we expand, we grow in rural space, is by having, by having a larger range of concepts, a larger range of paradigms that we're encompassing. And so I think that's, that's kind of where we're slowly moving, you know, as we, as we introduce new paradigms for things, we're slowly moving in real space. But I don't know, uh, you know, th these questions like, what, what would it be like to be a very different kind of observer? Again, we can tease out some things. So for example, our AIs get to be slightly different observers than we are. They get to have different sensory systems. They get to have, you know, IoT sensory systems where they're sensing, you know, all the, the billion devices, you know, or, or, or whatever, um, somewhere. Or they're getting to, uh, you know, to have a, a different sensory experience. And that, that perhaps gives us some perspective. I mean, even when we think about the dog with its, with its good nose that's kind of sensing the olfactory space around us, so to speak. You know, how do we, how do we think in those terms? I, I have no idea. You know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, the whales and they have perhaps some kind of language that they're using that is sort of identifiable to us because it has some kind of phrase-like structure that's a bit similar to human language. But the question of what they're talking about may be so alien to us that it's very, you know, it's very, it is, I think, it's an ultimate challenge of thinking is to think outside the paradigm that one exists in. And, uh, you know, I'm trying, but it's really hard. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the thing that is, to me, really exciting is that I think with the Ruliad, we have kind of the root of all of these paradigms. It doesn't allow us to know, you know, the branches, we're on one branch. And, yeah. you know, we're as much on one branch as we are on this particular planet in this particular galaxy. And we don't get to know what it would be like if we were in a galaxy with a giant jet coming out of one side of it or something like this. It's just we are where we are. And um, it's, uh, and it, you know, it takes us more effort than we can imagine to go to that other galaxy and find out what it would be like to be there. And, and you know, we're, we're the only difference with the Ruliad is that it is intellectual effort. It's not, you know, it's not rockets. Yeah. Um, now, one thing to say about the Ruliad and, and sort of understanding what's out there in it is one thing we can do is just pick rules for a program at random and just say, what does this program do? Yeah. That's like kind of jumping to some random place in the Ruliad and saying what's there. The difficulty is there is very little human connection between, you know, you have these rules you can run them, they do something. You say, well, what does this mean? Well, how does this connect to anything I know? How does it connect to my ordinary experience? We don't know that. You just made this kind of jump in real space without, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you know, you didn't make the voyage. You didn't make the journey yes. from where we are to there. You just jumped to that other place. And I think it's very interesting to study ruleology, kind of the what's out there in the rulead. Um, but it is a, uh, it's sort of a challenge. The, the challenge is not to see what's there. The challenge is to connect what one sees with anything that we already know about. <laughs>